Can you hear me, Richmond? Can you hear me, Richmond? My check, you can hear me? It's a beautiful Wednesday morning, the 7th of April, 2021. And we are here for a momentous occasion in our COVID-19 response here on Ireland. The arrival of the first batch of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine doses under the COVAX facility. St. Lucia is receiving its first shipment under the COVAX facility today. If you're just joining the live, a special good morning to you. My name is Jesse Leons. I'm joined by my, my colleague, Carlton Coxa Cyril, as we witness live from the Uranor International Airport in Thieu Fort the arrival of Amerijet cargo flight F68332. And of course, as I mentioned, we are seeing a quite a turn in our COVID-19 response here on island. Finally, the coming through of the COVAX facility with the first batch. 20, uh, 24,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. That is, of course, the first batch of 74,400 uh, vaccines of doses that have been promised under the COVAX facility, Carlton. Good morning. We am Jesse Combiendi. Nous ici à Asu Airport, la vie for your honor. Et puis, à présent, peut-être déjà ton, nous te supposé oui souver pas vaccine na qui a vini ban nous. Il bon important pour nous deux. Euh, nous avons mené l'activité ça qu'on y a fait à présent à pleine en ec ouivé et à sous pleine ça nous avons 24 000 doses de vaccine AstraZeneca en bas facilité Covax là il est bien important pour savoir aussi avant ça nous avons déjà eu souvé donation hot et bien gouvernement et bien monsieur Moïse il était bon nous 25 000 en ça nous avons bail à la grenade 5 000 et si vous avez suivi tout ce qui est fait avec la vaccination, vous savez que nous aussi, jouons un hôte, l'autre voisinage, nous, c'est Vincent, Dominique, Babad, c'est Mounsa Tedes. Quand tout nous avons 28 000 vaccines qui nous même te jouent, pour à présent, nous avons le premier set de vaccines qui sont sortis en bas de facilité COVAX, qui sont tous les autres pays en manière et yo a fait pour tout l'autre pays ça joigne pas vaccin yo quoi pas de temps qu'a vé nous ici à moi et Jesse car il faut savoir ça qu'il y a pas de temps il a fait quoi qu'on nous est bien doux il y avait à sous à Marijet avion c'est à Marijet cargo flight limo F six eight three three two et puis pas de temps bagarre là qu'a développé ici à nous qu'a mené bah où qu'a ils savent là qu'a une petite cérémonie à parmi délégué et mon qui j'ai venu ici à honorer euh, le Premier ministre, là, Alan Chasney, nous avons le ministre pour la Santé, euh, honorer Mary Isaac, euh, honorer euh, Sarah Flatbobrin et puis Pli. Mais comme moi, bien d'où, nous ici à Kabao Action, ça, et Kadou, merci tellement pour vous qui avez continué à venir nous, quand nous prenons l'activité, ça, quand il a fait. Premier, c'est vaccine AstraZeneca à Bakovat, 24 000. That's right, Carlton. Uh, as you rightly mentioned, this arrival is preceding a ceremony that will be held uh, in a close proximity to the, uh, the arrival here at the Uranor International Airport. We're going to have the a ceremony where we will have dignitaries, the Prime Minister Honorable Adam Chastney, as well as health officials, the Minister for Health, the Senator, the Honorable, uh, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, as well as other dignitaries, officials who have been on the, at the forefront of the COVID-19 response here in St. Lucia. And just to mention, you know, our COVID-19 vaccination campaign here on island is in full swing. And the COVAX facility coming through is coming at a time when we have already vaccinated some 22,839 individuals here on island. Of course, uh, the aim is at this point, we did hear from uh, the Ministry of Health indicating that this uh, 24 this 24,000 doses coming through the COVAX facility of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines will go towards the second doses that these individuals who received their first dose in the last few weeks 
uh, would have received. So this will be going towards the second dose for individuals who have so far received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. As I mentioned, we are in full swing of the COVID-19 vaccination uh, campaign, uh, and that is in large part due to the donations by our friendly nations in the region and uh, um, in a more extended space, uh, the government and people of, of India. Uh, we did have uh, India through their vaccine friendship program. It's being dubbed as vaccination diplomacy uh, globally. Uh, we're seeing that uh, we did receive a thousand vaccines uh, from Barbados when they received their first batch from India on the 10th of February. And we did receive a donation of 2,000 vaccines from Dominica the following day and later on from St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the sum of 5,000 doses. And of course, as I mentioned, they were the first to receive in the region their batches from the government and people of India. Another reason to be proud out of our region of this and in turn when St. Lucia did receive its first batch of vaccines vaccine doses from India received 20,000 doses toward the end of February uh, it did in turn donate some 5,000 doses to Grenada and we were one of four islands in the regions to donate uh, vaccine doses to Grenada because they had not yet received their donation from India. And speaking of India, the program, the vaccination program that they have afoot donating to many countries in the world, the, the sum of countries that have been, that have received, that have been beneficiaries of India's goodwill is 49 countries globally. So 49 countries from the Caribbean, from Latin America, from Asia, Africa, have received vaccines through the, the, from the Indian government through their, their program. In total, 22.9 million doses have been donated by the, the, the government of India. But today, if you're just joining the live, we have so far seen donations coming from India in the last few weeks, which jump-started our COVID-19 vaccination program. But today, right behind me, a flight, a cargo flight coming into St. Lucia, uh, at the UNR International Airport, we have the first batch of vaccines coming through the COVAX facility through which St. Lucia is assigned. And of course, we are expecting 74,400 vaccine doses from uh, the COVAX facility. However, today we will be receiving 24,400 in this batch. We are awaiting the arrival of the Prime Minister. Mr. Honorable Alan Chastney, and he should be coming uh, soon, along with other officials from the government of St. Lucia, to uh, formally accept on the tarmac. We do have also dignitaries who are in at the jet center, yeah, right. and that's in close proximity to the tarmac. Uh, they will uh, proceed with a ceremony to formalize the receipt of this first batch of vaccine doses under the COVAX facility. Et puis, euh, merci tellement, Dieu, encore. Et ça, c'est côté, nous avons dit, pour vous, nous avons nous avons dit, qui ça qui a fait, aujourd'hui, euh, nous avons mené le programme là en vie et fort, euh, pour plus spécifiquement, nous avons sous l'airport, ça c'est Euronora. Côté, nous avons 24 000 vaccins Oxford AstraZeneca en bas facilité euh, COVAX, là, déjà arrivé ici. Là. Si vous avez tant de ordres, c'est parce que l'avion plein de gens qui mène là, vous avez débattu ces vaccins. Comme je bien dit encore, vous avez dit nous en saint ici, nous avons déjà joué un chai assistance. Là, il vient pour vaccin. Ces vaccins, nous avons dit que les qui ont joué, c'est parce que changer le gouvernement est bien. Vous avez dit nous 25 000. En 25 000, ça nous avons la grenade 5 000. Changer avant ça aussi, nous jouons hot babat, babat ben nous en saïwa qui c'était nous en 3000 et puis là nous en alors 2000 hot Dominic et puis nous jouons hot gouvernement Sévesan. Babat yon mil, yon mil hot hot babat, nous en 5000 hot gouvernement Sévesan. Quoi tout nous tenions à prier 8000 hot l'autre pays qui assiste nous. Il est bien important pour vous savoir, je dis, ça nous a joué, c'est facilité à côté de la majorité de la terre qui a joué le vaccin. Nous avons tenu pour mettre un bagage en place pour manier les gens qui joué le vaccin. Pour date, nous avons vacciné 22 839 personnes. Ça, c'est 22 
22839 moun a trouvé koyo vacciné en bas programme nous et puis nous ka parlé premier dose vaccine nan changer AstraZeneca on y pour une deux doses et puis il bien important aussi pour moun sav jodi a euh, euh, vaccine qui a continué, il a continué à faire vaccine. Et puis, il y a un souffle, il y a un souffle aujourd'hui, un grand lac ou un souffle. Quand je dis, je crois que les gens qui ont fait ça, qui ont fait ça, changé, les premiers ministres ont parlé, nous disent, nous avons supposé en tout 74 400. Mm -hmm. Et bien, en ça, nous avons 24 000 aujourd'hui. Et puis, nous avons bien content pour ça, ça c'est pour commencer. Moun ka hen, euh, euh, deuxième euh, euh, dose là, là il vient pour vaccine là. Quoi, nous bien content nous jani et nous kakoué, ou même euh, content pour connaître développement ça qui ka point quoi. Et quand Jesse déjà dit, euh, qu'on ka wè de nous, yon ka debache vaccine là, mais la ka y ni un programme, un petit cérémonie qui ka y point quoi en dedans, euh, building là, dedans l'onge, le côté premier ministre. Uh, saint lucie Honorable Alan Chasne, uh, parmi uh, l'autre uh, dignitaire, parmi le ministre de la Santé, uh, uh, Mary Isaac Kaila, uh, représentative Pao Kaila, mm -hmm. et puis uh, l'autre uh, membre uh, qui est directement involvé l'Aïvini pour vaccination et puis le programme. Nan. Kwa, encore, pas dit que nous avons parlé, ou ka yon, ça qui a fait de nous, nous avons débattu ce uh, vaccin. En un moment, nous avons tout en dedans. Et puis, c'est la cérémonie qui a pris un coup en plus de détails. Mais pour présent, nous avons invité au goût et puis nous, quand nous avons eu des détails, on a ce qui a fait, quand il a fait à présent, là, à ce qui a pour vieux fort, you're an aura. You're absolutely right, Carlton. Definitely looking forward to the ceremony that will follow the arrival and, and the, the dismounting of the shipment uh, this morning. I uh, just want to let you know so far uh, the word we're receiving from the Ministry of Health in terms of the vaccinations uh, that have happened on island to date. 22,839 individuals have received their first dose of the vaccine. And this first batch that we're receiving from the COVAX facility is coming just in time, Carlton, right. because we've seen from the, the time we had the first set of vaccinations from mm -hmm. 17th February, where that's when the, the vaccination campaign started. Mm -hmm. It's just about time for the, these individuals to receive their second dose. Mm -hmm. And uh, these 24,400 doses coming through the COVAX facility, it's very, very timely. As I mentioned, the campaign did begin on the 17th of February. It started with phase 1A, and this was targeting healthcare workers in clinical settings, also first responders and the security service personnel, as well as other uh, frontline workers. They're on the front lines responding to COVID-19, putting their lives at risk, really. They were prioritized in the first instance, as well as some of our country leaders at the time. And phase 1B, which also ran simultaneously, we saw uh, individuals 65 years and older, the aged population, residents of elderly homes, also people living with chronic health conditions were prioritized in phase 1B. And uh, at this time, I, I think we're also prioritizing various sectors. The tourism sector has been prioritized. The education sector this week is being prioritized. Today, the Sufer Hospital is the place to be if you want to get vaccinated. You can pre-register hmi.govt.lc and of course get, va get uh, vaccinated. Go head on to uh, the Super Hospital tomorrow. The, the, the locations, uh, Carlton, you have them ready? Yeah. So if you want to get vaccinated tomorrow, you can in the meantime pre-register mm -hmm. and uh, then tomorrow head on over to uh, the VG Sports, VG Sports Complex to get vaccinated. Yesterday it was at the Philip Marsley grounds mm -hmm and also the Darren Sammy Cricket Grounds. Just yesterday, our persons had that opportunity to get vaccinated. Today, Sufer Hospital, and tomorrow, the VG Sports Complex. It is an opportunity uh, for you to protect yourself and your family. You can read up more about the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. It's what's on this uh, flight as, as we speak. So individuals who've received their first dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, they will be able to get their second dose in the coming weeks. But well, to remind you, the education sector this week is being prioritized as efforts are afoot to reopen the education sector in the physical setting. And so principals, teachers, ancillary staff, Everyone is being encouraged to get vaccinated. If you're just joining the live, a special good morning to you. We are coming to you, Carlton and myself, Jesse, coming to you live from the Uranori International Airport in Beaufort, where we await the 
well, we, the, the uh, flight has already arrived, it has landed, uh, but we await the arrival of the Prime Minister uh, for the formal uh, acceptance of this, this shipment of vaccines, the first batch of vaccines under the COVAX facility. And, you know, unlike the, the India arrangement where we saw the government of India through goodwill giving a one-off donation, through the COVAX facility, we have some 74,400 doses that we can look forward to. Today is just the first batch that we're getting. And uh, the COVAX facility has been months in the making. This has been uh, happening for so much time. World leaders trying to arrange and assemble doses of vaccines for populations that are at yeah. risk. You know, St. Lucia is one of those populations where we're not necessarily able to compete on the world stage for, you know, really good vaccines. And through the COVAX facility, the St. Lucian population is able to access. We are able to access large uh, numbers, high numbers, high volumes of the Oxford AstraZeneca doses. And so it is a momentous occasion. It is a momentous occasion in the fight against COVID-19. And we're coming upon a full year. We are in a, a year in this COVID-19 fight and definitely we are beginning to see the results of the work that started at the advent of the pandemic. Et puis, eh, oui encore, nous avons pris apologie et pour eh, ce qui est en tout désordre là qui est nous. Et puis, eh, ce qui est en de ce qui a fait là, c'est eh, jeudi à soir, mercredi le 7 uh, avril, nous avons eu nous le premier pas en ces vaccins Oxford AstraZeneca. Nous ici à ce pour vieux fort, Uranora, côté, nous avons débattu le vaccin. Après ça, nous avons eu le premier ministre là dans le moment. Uh, Honorable Alan Chasnik a reçu le vaccin et puis nous avons mené plus d'informations avec le programme qui a fait en dedans. Mais pour présent, uh, Jesse, moi, nous, ici, à présent, Jesse, avec moi, nous ici, nous avons eu des informations là pour faire avec ce qui a fait là. Comme je dis, le plein de qui vient, l'avion a chargé 24 000 doses de uh, vaccin AstraZeneca. Changer en bas, faciliter le vaccin, nous supposons 74 74,400. Ça veut dire en 24 000 nous joindre là où était à peu près 50,400 pour nous joindre. Bon facilité qu'on va se lancer en manière qui te mettait en place pour tous les autres pays avec la terre où ils ouvrent les vaccins. Quand ils ont fait ça parce que vous savez bien ça. Si vous êtes pour dépendre les communes qui ne plient l'argent, les communes qui plient go, les communes qui s'affrodient, nous là qu'on va avec nous vingt poules qu'on nous a dit. Mais merci bon Dieu nous joindre pour date côté nous au cas changer encore quand nous te doublé bonne à nous te oui souver vaccine hot gouvernement et dien et puis on te nous 25000 en 25000 ça nous bail la grenade 5000 parce que yo même pour te oui souver au cas aussi changer ba ba te ban nous 1000 Dominique te ban nous 2000 et puis nous te vie tant hot premier ministre là nous joindre en lot 5000 hot c'est euh, euh, Vincent. C'est Vincent. Pour mm -hmm. en tout nous tenir 8000 vaccins et puis prend en considération 20000 ans de gouvernement et dit nous tenir 28000 vaccins qui nous ni en cette ici. Pour encore nous est pour date. Combien monde qui a eu sous vrai vaccin yo et ben information qu'a dit vini le 6 avril qui c'était hier et nous j'ai ni 22839 monde Jesse, qui j'ai appris le vaccin, quand ça nous a joué à présent, quand il allé loin pour les gens qui ont joué le dernier vaccin. Bon, quand il a changé, depuis le 17 février, nous avons commencé l'activité de la vaccination. Et puis, c'est les gens qui ont joué, c'est ça qui est directement involvé, c'est les gens qui travaillent essentiel, tête gouvernement. Ça, c'est ces gens qui ont commencé. Et puis, après, nous avons commencé à faire des gens qui ont et, et 65 5 ans, mm -hmm. c'est moun sa, et il y a tout le côté, il y a des gens qui ont ça, qui ont fait ça. Grand citoyen, c'est ici. Et à présent, nous avons attention à ce que nous avons l'école, à ce que nous l'école, qui, quand nous bien savons, attention, c'est pour ouvrir l'école tout de suite. À présent, messieurs, dames, nous avons un bac au vaccin, nous ni vaccin na ici à Jessie, nous savons. Ça a allé bien loin. Quand nous te dou encore, pour vous qui calculer qui manière pour ça a un vaccin, vous avez demandé au souple, vous avez dit, 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 vous avez dit,
Kouye Health Center qui est plus pauvre, et bien sous ça, allez la bio information et que ça registre pour hen vaccine. Jodia, yo en souffrouye, et que c'est là yo kabay moun vaccine nan Jodia. Yé yo te en grand bol d'aron sans mien. Et puis nous kan kouajo, souple, messieurs, dames, euh, de pour une opportunité que vous voulez, ou ça fait ça. Pour un pas de temps ici, et puis nous, nous avons changé encore le programme dans un moment, il y a un truc pour un dedans, mais pour la présence, nous avons fait là, c'est nous avons espéré pour le vaccine débattre à ce plein de présent, et puis nous avons plus d'informations à ce ça. Et moi, je crois que c'est un bon lèvre pour nous, PV, côté nous, il y a présent, et puis les gens qui ni euh, testé ces derniers mois à nous ni un monde qui testé et puis côté nous et puis monde qui a pris traitement comme comme un monde qui j'ai pris euh, vaccin nous ça fait ça pas dit en nous cas espéré et pour nous ni papier et un chai win cabin bon bon cabin là mais nous cas essayer qu'on nous fait the word that we're receiving from the ministry of health uni uni ma kapale am kwe olep epu Uh -huh. But the word we're receiving from the Ministry of Health and Wellness for the last 24 hours is that St. Lucia is recording seven new cases of COVID-19. And of course, these, these samples were processed on the 5th of April. And this was out of 86 samples. These seven individuals, as per usual, were seen at various community clinics on island. They were assessed and tested and asked to remain in isolation pending the outcome. And they are now being treated for the coronavirus. Uh, we also had confirmation of the recovery of eight individuals uh, with COVID-19 and this brings the total number of active cases in country to date to 124. Presently, unfortunately, we do have one active case in critical condition. We do hope that they're able to pull through, bringing the total number of cases to 4,304 since last year, March. 4,304 cases registered on island and the active cases and I know it's much to the satisfaction of the Ministry of Health, uh, down to 124 cases, and it has been teeter-tottering in the last few days in that uh, vicinity. As of March 31st, the end of March, we had 22,834. Yeah, that would be as of April. As of, yes, as of, eight, then, yeah, 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 as of 7th April. So today is the word we're receiving right. from the Ministry of Health of the over 22,000. At this time, we are going to witness the arrival of the Prime Minister uh, to formally accept on tarmac the dispatch coming from and coming through the COVAX facility today, Wednesday, the 7th of April, 2021. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney, I know that the Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, will be in tow as well. We have representatives from the Pan American Health Organization. They have been uh, great advocates for our region in terms of accessing uh, vaccines for our part of the world. And at this point in time, St. Lucia being the latest to receive its first batch uh, from and through the COVAX facility. Definitely a momentous day uh, for us in terms of our fight against COVID-19. And we so far had over 22,000 persons vaccinated and the hope at this point in time with this receipt of 24,000 doses is that uh, these same individuals would receive uh, their second dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Et puis encore qu'on nous a dit bonjour et merci pour tout le monde qui a fait le programme nous aujourd'hui. Euh, vous avez observé euh, euh, vous avez tenu un chai des ordres et vous avez aussi ouais, derrière nous euh, c'est un gros avion plein et ça c'est plein à euh, Marijet qui mène 24 000 euh, doses de euh, vaccins. Nous avons le premier euh, set là. Changer, le Premier ministre l'a déjà dit, en bas facilité COVAX là, nous avons joué euh, 74 400, quoi, 24 000 déjà ici. Ya. Pas de temps, nous avons espéré, le euh, Premier ministre l'a pour y surveiller ici, à bon plein, avant nous, en trois dedans, euh, nous avons eu ce limo à côté de nous pour date, là, il vient pour. Ça fait Covid là. Eh bien, information nous n'est ici à qui nous est souvent hors ministre de santé qui a monté confirmation dit 7 k 9 en disant y ont battu nous est souvent 86 tests qui étaient faits. Certains ces mondes ça a trouvé qu'on y a testé positif et qui ont pris en considération les trois avouis 
pour les 4 avril et puis ils ont fait ce test le 5 avril. Quoi, ça, ça veut dire, là, ils viennent pour nous ici, à, à présent, nous avons 124 personnes qui ont pris traitement pour le COVID. -là. Et merci Dieu, nous avons 8 personnes qui ont pris le couvert, c'est les personnes qui ont pris le traitement et qui ont pris le tournée. Là, ils viennent pour date en tout, nous avons 4300 et puis 4 personnes. J'ai trouvé qu'on a testé positif pour les affaires COVID. -là. Parler de COVID ou quand il y a une vaccination qui a continué, avec les vini pour information, nous sommes ici à Hodmini Santé. Vini hier le 6 avril, nous avons à peu près 22 839 personnes qui ont eu la vaccination. Yo. Et puis, aujourd'hui, côté de la eh bien, l'activité a continué, là, il vient pour vaccination. Il oh, yeah. y a l'hôpital Soufrière, la cour, l'hôpital Soufrière. Quand on a souka ou été en wet là, là, et que vous devez prendre vaccin, euh, ou ça, allez là, il y a un travail vaccin. Bien important, si vous avez un qui a voulu prendre vaccin, ou ça, allez à son adresse là, hmi.govt.lc, pour registrer, euh, si vous voulez prendre vaccin. Nan. Eh bien, il y a un mandat du département de santé qui a un pour aller à un health center qui est plus pauvre, il y a un nom, il y a une information, et puis il y a un cas qui est pour information avec deux qui jouent ou ça joue un vaccin. Et bien important, si vous voulez aller, vous voulez vous savez, c'est faux ou marcher, puis en bouteille glow, et puis un petit bagage pour manger parce que vous ne savez jamais savoir qui ça qui a fait. Ou, et nous avons apprécié ce qui fait ça. Encore, venez avec une manière pour identifier quoi, Baptiste, ou passeport, ou ID card, ou vous avez pour marcher et puis ça, messieurs, dames. Encore, nous avons changé à soi mercredi. Nous ici à uh, Jesse, mm -hmm. et nous avons espéré pour le Premier ministre, oui, souvent, ces vaccins ça, ici à soi pour un vieux fort, you run or, pour nous amener nos activités à quoi il a fait à présent, Jodia. Les 7 avril. Absolutely. Today is the day our first COVAX vaccine arrival, the first batch of vaccines. 24,000 doses uh, will be formally received by our Prime Minister, the Audible Alan Chastney, through this COVAX facility. And it is the first of many batches that we are to expect. Uh, it's a total of 74,400 doses that we should be expecting uh, through the COVAX facility. Uh, immediately after this uh, formality on the tarmac, we will have a ceremony at the jet center. It's a close proximity to uh, the location where the cargo plane is at. Uh, we, expect, we can expect the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, to be present there. Minister for Health, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac. A Minister for External Affairs, Honorable Sarah Flood Bobra. Also the British High Commissioner, His Excellency Steve McCready. Paho Country Program Specialist, Mr. Reynold Hewitt. And it's very important to note that, you know, it has been an, 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 a, a very wide affair in terms of the agencies and the organizations that have been involved in ha ha today happening in terms of the COVAX facility and St. Lucia and many other locations, any, many other countries around the world benefiting. We do also have uh, the Chief Medical Officer for St. Lucia, Dr. Sharon Belmont-George, in the jet center at this time everyone is really on standby for you know the formal acceptance of this shipment for this ceremony to transpire on the inside uh, we have the ambassador for caricom and oecs uh, her excellency elma jean isaac also immunization manager tecla jabatiste and she has been very vocal she's also the assistant principal nursing officer speaking to us and always keeping us updated in terms of our uh, the vaccination drive here on island we also have the Principal Nursing Officer, Julieta Frederick Cassius, also Deputy Immunization Manager, Bernadette Regis, the Permanent Secretaries in the various min involved ministries, also Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Jenny Daniel, Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Glensford Joseph. We have the Procurement Officer, Alison Jean, performer uh, for the ceremony on the inside. We can look forward to a performance from Naomi Grandison. She is also a registered nurse and somebody who's been at the forefront of the sensitization efforts within the Ministry of Health and Wellness. And we do have a recent COVID-19 patient, a civilian in the person of Delta Benjamin, who will be speaking during the ceremony, giving uh, their account 
of their COVID-19 experience and also the road to recovery. And of course, we also have, uh, we will also have presented the airport manager. And this has been a, quite an undertaking. Uh, what you're seeing is uh, on your screen right now is a very small portion of the work that is ongoing right now. We do have cameras at various locations and personnel at various locations uh, at the Uranor International Airport, all ensuring that we can capture this momentous occasion today, the first batch of the doses of vaccine through the COVAX facility being received by St. Lucia. Et puis, euh, oui, Jesse, encore bien important, les nouvelles euh, qui s'est fait à présent, euh, qu'on nous a dit bonjour et merci. N'importe côté où payer aujourd'hui, ou qu'on attend de voir nos programmes, nous ne sommes pas en studio nous aujourd'hui, mais nous ici à, pour faire assurer, nous menons une activité ça, qui a fait ici à, en vie et fort. Et qui activité ça est? C'est le fait qu'il y a 24 000 doses Oxford AstraZeneca en bas facilité. Covax là. Quand on a bien sauf, le Premier ministre là, on a Alan Chasne qui a été pour vous surveiller. Et Jesse est allé en ce nom parmi les gens qui est là pour la cérémonie. Ça. Euh, nous avons le ministre qui est responsable pour la santé. On a Mary Isaac qui est là. Le euh, ministre, euh, on a Sarah Flood Broubrin qui est aussi là. Lui qui est responsable avec le ministre pour faire nous l'autre pays. Euh, nous avons le PAO. Pao ni un représentatif yo ici à tête pays ici à un spécialiste là venu pour programme nous ici à ça c'est monsieur Renaud Yuit ici à il représente un petit programme là où ça chef médical officier nous ça c'est docteur Belma George ici à ensemble et puis ambassadeur Caricom qui est aussi à cela qui a représenté ça c'est Excellence Elma um, Isaac eh, ici ya eh, là venu pour manager eh, là venu pour immunization na qui ka point quoi eh, mazé Teclan Jean Baptiste Pierre Saint Tranger pour ça qui ka aller eh, en nos là venu en département santé ya. ça c'est eh, Juliette Frédéric Cassias il est puis nous quoi nous ka wè en chay moun bien représenté ici ya pour programme ça pour y s'ouvrir comme dou 24000 dos Oxford AstraZeneca. Quoi encore, nous avons apologié pour vous désordre dans ce que vous avez mais ça c'est parce que nous avons mené une activité à quoi il a fait. Si vous bien vu au Kaiwe, c'est ça c'est ces vaccins qui a débattu. Et quand nous bien dou, ça sorti à sous un Mary Jet, il y a un écouté, et puis nous ici, à a eu une information. Bien important aussi, pas dit à nous les vaccinations, nous avons à peu près 22 000 personnes j'ai trouvé vaccine quoi euh, euh, suivez nous et puis nous quand nous camenons activité ça vaccine nous oui souvent ici à encore nous avons bien dou premier ministre là qui vient dans un moment et qui a oui souvent et action qui est sorti par à Suisse à l'état macla et nous qui a entré en dedans quoi sans commande là pour information on dit à nous en vie fort à souhait pour à Yuranora qui a oui souvent un moment, nous avons toujours changé un moment, mais ce qui est bien important, date là, le 7 avril, mercredi le 7 avril, l'année 2021. Jesse? Absolutely. We do invite you, our viewership, to stay tuned, stay tuned. We will soon see the arrival of the Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney, to formally receive the first batch of doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine through the COVAX facility on the tarmac and then subsequently uh, we can look forward to a ceremony, a formal ceremony to be held mm -hmm. at the Jet Center uh, where we will, I I'm sure of it, hear from the various officials in retrospect and in hopes for the future now that we are receiving this additional batch of vaccines. We've heard from the Ministry of Health that this uh, this batch of vaccines, the 24,000 doses of Oxford AstraZeneca, will go toward the second phase of our national vaccination campaign. We so far seen through phase 1A and 1B, um, thousands, 22,000, almost 23,000 at this point individuals receiving the first dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine at this point in time. Well, since we started 17th February, giving the first giving the first vaccine on 17th February. It's about time for these same individuals who received their first dose of the vaccine to get their second dose. And uh, we were expecting the vaccines to come either 
Monday Carlton or right. Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, or one day late, but it's very much on time. And we're definitely very grateful that we're able to receive such assistance. Countries like St. Lucia are vulnerable in the sense that, you know, when it comes to the clamoring for vaccines, yes. you have many countries who have deeper pockets, who have a greater reach, and they're able to do much more in terms of securing vaccines for their population. But thankfully, through the COVAX facility, countries, vulnerable countries like St. Lucia, are able to get a share of the pie, of the vaccine pie globally. And we're so fortunate to be able to receive today's batch, to be able to get more of our population inoculated toward the greater goal of herd immunity here on island so we can get back to some sense of normalcy as pre-COVID. Many of you would recall, and it's hard to remove from the memory at this time, what we have been through in the last year. Uh, many sectors have been impacted. Our economy has been impacted. Uh, the pandemic has you know taken so much resource from the government purse at this time and 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 the effort now on the part of the government of st lucia the alan chastney administration is to recover slowly but steadily uh, from the impact of covid 19 and part of that recovery is the hope in the vaccination and of course today the first of uh, many batches that we're going to receive through the covax facility today is 24,000. And we are supposed to receive in total 74,400 doses through the COVAX facility. We just want to let you know that, you know, there has been such a great show of solidarity in the region prior to the accept to today's event. And we know that many other islands in the region are receiving their batches of vaccines through the COVAX facility. But prior to this, we saw the goodwill. We saw the heartwarming demonstration of nation to nation love. You know, and it, it really began with uh, the government of India making a donation to countries around the world through their vaccine friendship program. And 22.9 million doses of vaccines they were able to give out to countries around the world and St. Lucia being a lucky beneficiary. We were able to receive 25,000 doses of the uh, vaccine. And prior to that, we were able to you know, benefit from the receipt of other islands in the region. When Barbados received their first batch from India, their donation from India, we received a thousand. When Dominica received their batch from India, their donation from India, we received 2,000. And St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we received 5,000 from them as well. And in turn, when St. Lucia received its 25,000 doses from India, that donation, we were able to in turn make a donation to the government of Grenada for their a national vaccination campaign to kick start so definitely it's very heartwarming this whole vaccination conversation has been very heartwarming we have seen love from all fronts really and we do hope this continues we do hope that we can continue to see as particularly in our region this sort of solidarity going forward I want to remind you of the figures we've had 23,000 people being um, vaccinated so far. That's the word we've just received from the immunization manager, uh, Ms. Jabatiste, Takla Jabatiste. And we do hope that during this week, we do, today is uh, vaccinations happening at the Sufer Hospital, tomorrow at the VG Sports Complex. You have a, an opportunity to get vaccinated. Bring along with you your ID card. If you can pre-register, hmi.govt. Okay, at this point in time, we do have the arrival of the Prime Minister, yes, we do see the Prime Minister walking on to the tarmac right now. And uh, he is accompanied by several dignitaries at this time. And they include, they include the Minister for Health, Honorable, the Senator Honorable Mary Isaac, several other dignitaries I could see, the PAHO representative, The yeah. Power Country Program Specialist, Mr. Reynold Hewitt. Uh, we also have the British High Commissioner, His Excellency Steve McCready. The Minister for External Affairs, some members of the Cabinet, Minister for External Affairs. Uh, the Honorable Sarah Flood Bobra, Minister for Health, Senator Honorable Mary Isaac. Also, the Ambassador for CARICOM and the OECS, Her Excellency Elma Jean Isaac. Immunization Manager. Tekla Jabatiste, an individual who's been at the forefront of our vaccination campaign here in St. Lucia. And also, not forgetting the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Velmar George. They are all on standby, of course, also with some paraphernalia in promotion 
a vac of the vaccination campaign here on island. Again, Carlton, quite a momentous occasion. It has brought our GIS team, several dignitaries, government officials, and other organizers. <laughs>
qu'on nous a bien ça va aller loin de manière pour nous empêcher et puis nous contrôler et vers maintenant car si mais où j'ai pour apporter à présent nous ni c'est jamais dire qu'à point porter pour qu'ils savent ça c'est un moment histoire nous côté nous qui est toujours changé et puis ça pas dernier Jesse là qui n'est plus temps pour venir encore parce que comme bien dit nous ni à peu près 50400 vaccins pas facilité qu'au vaccin qui nous était pour y s'ouvrir mais aujourd'hui à nous qui y s'ouvrir 24000 et puis en d'un moment là nous sortons les tamac là nous qui y est activité à entrer à des dents longe là côté et nous qui tient hot c'est mon nom qui évolue à si un mois qu'on nous est bien des ministres de santé là mais c'est tech là peut-être qu'il parle mais on est mettez programme un programme en place pour dire merci pour bas information et puis pour faire nous savent nous en la j'ai toujours ça nous qu'a fait c'est pour faire assurer et puis ces vaccins ça nous qu'a ça continuer mettez bagay en place pour ou abattre combattre vermine corona et puis quand est bien dit plus bon et Jesse depuis les 17 nous commençons puis vaccination et puis nous qu'a continuer et ça c'est yon pas en la porte là pour ouais qui nous a eu la vie vie con normal mais pour à présent nous allons continuer mettez bagay en place les vini pour nous qu'on nation qu'à combattre ça qui a fait là absolutely this is watershed in our covid 19 response we know many countries around the world have been waiting for their share through the covax facility and saint lucia's day has finally come We've seen the first batch of vaccines, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, coming through. 24,000 vaccines doses coming through here today. St. Lucia, this is momentous. This is significant. After the last year of many persons battling COVID-19, many persons succumbing. Uh, we remember them at this time. St. Lucia is able to do better. And this means that we are able to have many more persons inoculated. As the Ministry of Health indicated, they are able to, through this first batch, receive through the COVAX facility, vaccinate uh, the individuals who've received their first doses. So these individuals, as per Oxford AstraZeneca, receive full immunity uh, as per this vaccine. And so this is very, very, very significant. And not to worry, there is more on the way. 24,000 doses through the COVAX facility today, but we are to expect more. The total number of vaccines we're to expect for, through the COVAX facility is 74,400 doses. At this time, we're, we're still seeing uh, photo opportunities being uh, taken out on the tarmac. The officials are still there. And we should expect, in short order, a continuation of the proceedings indoors, in the shade, with a ceremony at the Jet Center, which is in close proximity to where we are at, at the plane. Okay, so, so we are now preparing to head on in uh, to the Jet Center. We do invite you to stay tuned. There is a program that has been prepared. We will be hearing from the Prime Minister following this uh, display on the tarmac, hearing from the Prime Minister, also the Minister for Health, the Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, Minister for External Affairs, Honorable Sarah Flood Bobra. British High Commissioner, His Excellency Steve McCready. Also present at that ceremony, the Pahu Country Program Specialist. We know the Pan American Health Organization has been very active in the advocacy and otherwise uh, in ensuring that St. Lucia, as well as the other member states, benefit from the COVAX facility. We'll have the representative 
the specialist, program specialist, Mr. Reynold Hewitt, Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, also the Ambassador for CARICOM, OECS, Her Excellency Elma Jean Isaac, Immunization Manager, Tecla Batiste, Principal Nursing Officer, Julieta Frederick Cassius, Deputy Immunization Manager, Bernadette Regis, and many other officials from government and other agencies who've been involved in this effort amounting to today. Do stay tuned as we prepare to head on back into the Jet Center. And at this point in time, we just want to hand over to Carlton Cyril, my colleague who is now on the inside. And he will take over from there until I get back in as well. Stay tuned. Carlton. airport of course on the that COVAX agreement uh, what is happening is we are receiving our first part of 24,000 vaccines uh, we would remember the Prime Minister made mention to St. Lucia's part of that um, COVAX facility we are entitled to an initial 74,400 vaccines so a historic day for St. Lucia, as we see the arrival of 24,000 uh, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. And um, just before we continue with our program inside the VIP launch, um, on the tarmac, we are seeing the Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney, together with other dignitaries, and of course, uh, persons from the Ministry of Health, um, we have representative of PAO. Um, we have the chief medical officer, uh, Dr. Belma George, um, taking the opportunity, of course, for us to make um, this documentation a photo shoot together with the media. And we here at the GIS are bringing you this as it happens. So uh, right now, they are making the way uh, to come where the program will continue inside the VIP launch. Of course, we would expect that the Prime Minister uh, would utter some words, of course, updating the nation and giving some more information. And we ask you to continue to stay with us as we bring the activity happening here live. Encore, messieurs, dames, nous ici, et puis un jour, histoire, by saint lucy ça qui a fait là, nous avons dit que nous avons reçu 24 000 doses de vaccin AstraZeneca. Changer le Premier ministre, nous déjà dit, nous avons reçu 74 000 vaccin. Eh bien, aujourd'hui, nous avons avion où il et puis là, nous avons eu côté. Saint Lucie, je ne premier pas en ça qui c'est 24000 euh, Oxford Astra Zeneca. Changer nous t'es supposé hen et ben nous ni pour hen euh, 74400 quoi 24000 j'ai arrivé à sous euh, yon avion là en Marriott euh, cargo flight et puis euh, 
premier ministre l'a déjà fait ça y est ni pour faire à sous ta marque là il surveille et examine et puis l'autre officiel et puis à présent activité à qui entre en dedans lunch là côté nous qui étant ces gens qui représentent ici à comment est bien devant parmi moun qui ici à pas du premier ministre là ministre qui est responsable pour santé honorable Mary Isaac honorable Sarah Flood Brobrin nous ni High Commission l'Angleterre ici à Steve Excellency Steve Magridi nous ni Pao représenté qu'a représenté ici à par par représentatif pays à Monsieur Reynold Hewitt programme là aussi ici à nous qu'a Docteur Sharon Belma George quoi à un moment conduit par Maître qui est responsable Fenel Neptune et qui a eu point activité avec nous qui a continué ici à so we are right now into uh, the launch and of course we are seeing uh, the walking of the arrival of the prime minister honorable alan chasney together with other dignitaries um we could always see senator honorable mary isaac and we will have the official ceremony where we will hear from these officials and of course our master of ceremony from the department of health none other than funnel neptune she will be taking over when we um, make the change but for now you are now seeing the arrival of our dignitaries media personalities as we bring the live coverage of the COVAX vaccine arrival an initial 24,000 out of 74,400 well represented here we could see uh, British High Commission Commissioner here his Excellency uh, Steve uh, McGreevy, Honorable Sarah Flood Beaubrin, Minister of External Affairs. Uh, we could also see Minister of Health among the dignitaries here. Um, we could see our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Belma George. Here we have our Immunization Manager, Tecla Jean Baptiste. Um, we could also see Principal Nursing Officer, Julieta Frederick among other persons a deputy immunization manager bernadette regis and of course permanent secretary minister of external affairs william simon so as we prepare for our brief ceremony to mark the arrival of our covax vaccine right here at the uranura international airport we are at the iam facility uh, we are expecting that um, we would hear briefly from our dignitaries and invited um, guests. As per our official um, program, um, we will be hearing um, shortly from um, the immunization manager, Tecla Jabatis. Of course, right before that, we would have the national anthem. And um, our official host here would be Funnel Neptune. Of course, um, we continue the program with the Power Country Manager Specialist, Renal Witt, and of course, a performance by Naomi Granderson, followed by a speech Minister of Health, Senator Honorable Mary Isaac. We have a speech from a frontliner, also a recovered COVID patient, and then we would have our closing remarks from Dr. Joseph. So definitely, um, um, ladies and gentlemen, you could stay in touch with us while we bring the activity as it happens. The arrival of 24,000 COVID uh, vaccine, um, AstraZeneca vaccine for the COVID-19. And um, what you're seeing right now is preparation for us to move over to Master of Ceremony, uh, which is none other than Fennel and Neptune, uh, who is going to take over um, this uh, proceeding, our brief, brief handing over ceremony of the COVAX uh, vaccine. A live broadcast is brought to you uh, right here on NTN. We encourage you to stay tuned as we continue to bring you the live coverage happening right now, the COVAX vaccine handover ceremony here at what is called the Jet Center 
on a historic day in St. Lucia, the 7th, April 7th, um, 2021. So we are now handing over to Fennel Neptune, who is the master of ceremony in here, who's going to take over from us right now. A pleasant good day, everyone, and welcome to the official ceremony of the arrival of the COVID-19 vaccines for the COVAX facility. I am your mistress of this ceremony, Funnel Neptune. First, I would like to recognize the presence of dignitaries and other specially invited guests. The Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney, Minister for Health, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Jenny Daniel, Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Glensford Joseph, PAHO Country Program Specialist, Reynold Hewitt, British High Commissioner, Mr. Steve McCready, Assistant Bishop of Pentecostal Assembly of the West Indies, Pastor Lazarus Eugene, members of the health team, Office of the Prime Minister, other specially invited guests, welcome everyone. It is indeed a momentous occasion for us in St. Lucia as we receive 24,000 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine for the COVAX facility. We will first start with the official ceremony with prayers. I now call on the Assistant Bishop of Kawi, Pastor Lazarus Eugene. Glory be to God. If we have, and I know we do have Catholics, you can pay your homage. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This morning, I am extremely honored to be here, knowing that we St. Lucians acknowledge God in all our affairs. I know that um, thousands of St. Lucians have been praying over the last year concerning this virus and this morning. It is an honor to be here and we continue praying, knowing that even in the vaccine, God gave men wisdom to develop it. I believe God took care of this plane flight safely to St. Lucia. I believe God touched some hearts that people donate and make contributions uh, so that we could have a vaccine. The Bible says in Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2, unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who builds it. Unless the Lord guards a city, the watchman stays up in vain. It is vain for us to rise up early and to sit down late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Now, the person who wrote that is Solomon, one of the persons history and Bible declared to be one of the most, uh, most powerful men in terms of wisdom. And he wrote that after building the two most lavish buildings of his time, the temple of God and his own house. And he said, I built them, 30,000 people worked on them for 14 years. However, he acknowledged, I couldn't do that without God. And this morning, we want to bless God. We want to thank him. 
we have some vaccine here. The scientists couldn't develop it without God. The plane couldn't fly here with it without God. The nurses administering it will not do a good job without God. And there's one little area I'm going to touch on. Even administering it, we have to pray that not one person in St. Lucia will develop any serious reaction to the virus, to the vaccine, sorry. Because this is what people are looking for, a cause for us not to take it. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name, my God. We acknowledge your presence in the development of this vaccine. We thank you, Lord, you woke us up this morning. And Lord, you gave us safe passage to this place. We thank you, God, for the wisdom that you have blessed our leaders with in this country. Throughout the last 12 or so months, Father, guiding us safely a safe journey when other more powerful, more wealthy nations suffered such tremendous loss in terms of finances and human life. You protected us. We say thank you, my God. Father, I pray this morning that you continue to bless uh, those people of God who developed this vaccine, those establishments. Father, those who made financial contributions and other contributions that the vaccines can be in St. Lucia. Those who are going to administer it. I pray, Father, that you continue to bless them, you guide them, you protect them. And Lord, you give them the wisdom to determine when and where, who should receive it first. And I pray even now, Father, that we as a nation, we as a people, will be obedient to the authorities you have placed over us, who makes tremendous sacrifice night and day, sacrificing even their career sometimes to ensure our well-being, our good health. Lord, I pray, God, that the immune system of the people of St. Lucia will respond well to the vaccine. And at the end of it all, when all is said and done and the majority of St. Lucians are vaccinated, we will say it was good. I pray, Father, that you place in the hearts of leaders, community leaders, that we will encourage our people to do the right thing and be vaccinated. Father, I pray for the remainder of this ceremony today, that it will go well and your name will be glorified at the end of it all. Let your name forever be praised, my God. In all that we do, have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Pastor Lazarus Eugene, for the prayers. We now move to the national anthem. If we can please stand and stand at attention. Please be seated. Of course, for us at the Ministry of Health, we have been battling with the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And the vaccine is one of the areas that is very important to us. And there's someone from the health team who is very instrumental and play a very significant part um, as it relates to vaccination. I now call on the National Immunization Manager, Nurse Tekla Jabatis, to provide us welcome remarks. Thank you, Mistress of Ceremonies. Honorable Prime Minister, Helen Chastney, Minister of Health and Wellness, 
Honorable Senator Mary Isaac, Deputy, Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Ms. Jenny Daniel, Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Belma George, Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Glensford Joseph, PAHO Country Program Specialist, Mr. Reynold Hewitt, British High Commissioner, Mr. Steve McCready, the Assistant Bishop of the Pentecostal Assembly of the West Indies, Pastor Lazarus Eugene, members of the health team, Office of the Prime Minister, other invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good morning. It's indeed an honor to welcome you at this momentous ceremony to witness the arrival of the first batch of vaccines allocated to St. Lucia through the COVAX facility, a moment that we all keenly anticipated. Like the rest of the world, COVID-19 has affected us tremendously, causing loss of lives and livelihoods, affecting the economy, and increasing the burden of disease. St. Lucia reported its first case of COVID-19 on the 13th of March, 2020, a little over one year ago. Globally, more than 131 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 have been reported to the World Health Organization with more than 2 million lives lost. In our small island, 4,304 cases have been reported and 63 lives lost due to COVID-19 as at the 6th of April, 2021. The development and approval of safe and effective vaccines against the COVID-19 virus has indeed brought hope in the battle against this pandemic. Vaccines have been proven to be one of the most cost-effective public health strategies and have saved millions of lives and reduced the burden of infectious diseases. For the National Immunization Program, and by extension, the government of St. Lucia, the introduction of the COVID-19 vaccine is a major milestone in reducing coronavirus, coronavirus transmission and the burden of disease. The COVID-19 vaccine will not only protect our citizenry from severe COVID-19 infection and death, but is also a major step towards achieving some sense of normalcy. The national COVID-19 vaccination campaign was launched on the 17th of February, 2021, focusing on priority groups such as frontline workers, senior citizens, and people living with chronic conditions, all of which are at particularly high risk of severe COVID-19 in, uh, infection if they are infected by the virus. As of the 6th of April, 2021, 22,839 first doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine have been administered. This represents approximately 12.6% of our population. For us, this is a significant achievement within a short space of time. The response has been very encouraging, and this demonstrates that the citizens of St. Lucia appreciate the health benefits of vaccines. It further demonstrates that collectively, we embrace the opportunity to regain some measure of normalcy and are committed to continue fighting the COVID-19 pandemic which has now challenged us for over one year now. We are proud to have complemented the other public health measures with vaccination to fight the COVID-19 battle. 
COVAX aims to ensure equitable vaccine distribution. St. Lucia, as a member of the COVAX facility, will have the benefit of accessing safe and effective vaccines to cover 20% of its population. Today, we receive 24,000 doses of this allocation. As we transition into phase two of the national campaign, this first tranche will allow us to vaccinate approximately 6.6% of the population, and that's with two doses. This will be part of the national effort to build immunity against the COVID-19 virus and also strengthen public health strategies to manage this pandemic. Remember, we are all in this together. No one is safe until we are all safe. Vaccinate for you, for yours, for us. We thank everyone involved in the effort in securing these vaccines. Once again, I welcome you to this special ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Javatis. The Pan American Health Organization has been providing much needed support towards St. Lucia's response to, to the COVID-19 pandemic. And one of the areas they have contributed significantly towards is the procurement of the vaccines in general. I now call on the PAHO Country Program Specialist, Mr. Reynolds Hewitt, to provide us with some remarks. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Mistress of Ceremony. Please allow me to accept the protocol that was already established. I am pleased to be here this morning with you to bring you brief remarks on behalf of the Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization, and the representative of Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Dr. Itadiz Gebre. I extend warm and heartfelt greetings on his behalf, and regrettably, he's unable to be here this morning with you for such an important public health event. Honorable Prime Minister, the start of vaccine rollout is a hopeful step in the fight against this virus, and PAHO is proud to facilitate this urgently needed effort in St. Lucia. Our region, the Americas, will have to immunize at least 700 million people against COVID-19, which is a significant public health undertaking, of which 147,000 persons are targeted to be vaccinated in St. Lucia. Today, the Pan American Health Organization, as a procurement agency for the COVAX facility, is delivering the first allocation of 24,000 doses to the Ministry of Health and the government of St. Lucia. Access to COVID-19 vaccines should not be a privilege for a few, but a right that we all share regardless of who we are and where we are from. PAHO is supporting countries in distributing COVID-19 vaccines to their populations, building on their long-standing experience with vaccination campaigns and immunization programs. Around 142 million people have received at least one dose of vaccines in the Americas as of April 1. That is 26% in Latin America and the Caribbean. As our PAHO director, Dr. Carissa Etienne, recently mentioned, immunization in Latin America and the Caribbean should be a global priority, and our region needs vaccines as much as possible to vaccinate as many persons as possible and to save as many lives. The arrival of COVAX vaccine in our region and today in St. Lucia is a historic milestone as well as a combination of months of negotiations and commitment to global solidarity. In an effort to, in an effort to coordinate, in an effort coordinated by Power Revolving Fund, approximately 2.7 million doses have been delivered and are deployed throughout the region of the Americas. The PAHO's Revolving Fund is facilitating access to COVID-19 vaccines for countries in the Americas 
that are participating in the COVAX facility and is working with UNICEF and vaccine manufacturers to organize deliveries as quickly as possible. The doses, the doses and availability of vaccines under COVAX are subject to emergency use approval by WHO, the manufacturing production capacity, as well as establishing supply agreements between the producers and the COVAX facility. The pre-qualifications of vaccines to be used through COVAX allows SPAHO to offer vaccines with the highest effectiveness and safety standards. The vaccine supplies continue to be, great, to be a great challenge and a large part of this is due to delays in production as manufacturers scale up capacity. The goal of the COVAX facility is to provide vaccines for at least 20% of the population in each participating country globally. With this aim of protecting those at risk and to save as many lives as possible, COVAX remains the best option to offer vaccines with equity. Honorable Prime Minister, while there is hope, while there is reasons for hope, we must also remember that doses are limited. And it, and it will be several months before we can rely on vaccines to control this virus. Our goal must be to save as many lives as possible by prioritizing early doses for those who are at high risk of infection. Sorry, for those who are at high risk of infection. These first vaccines will help us to leverage the initial limited number of doses for greater impact, preventing hospitalization and death, and protecting, protecting health workers and reducing the strain on our health systems. Vaccines will help to save lives and eventually halt the pandemic. But with around 57 million confirmed cases and close to 2 million deaths as of April 3rd, countries in the Eastern Caribbean and our region in general must maintain public health measures to limit exposure to the virus. Social distancing, limited gathering, the consistent use of face masks in public setting and frequent hand washing are the public health measures that are effective for reducing the number of COVID-19 vaccine at this time. Finally, please accept, Mr. Prime Minister, our sincere congratulations and appreciation for your strong leadership to the national COVID-19 response effort today here in St. Lucia and accessing the COVAX vaccine through the COVAX facility this year. We continue to be supportive to St. Lucia and the government in the fight against COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hewitt, for reiterating your organization's commitment to ensure that St. Lucia is supplied with COVID-19 vaccines. Thank you. Another contributor in facilitating the vaccines for the COVAX facility was the British High Commission. Today, we have with us the British High Commissioner, Mr. Steve Bacridi, who will speak with us on his support provided. Good morning, everyone. Please allow me to adopt the protocol that's already been established as well. I'm very pleased on behalf of the British government to be here today. COVAX has been a huge international effort and the UK is proud to have been one of the first countries to back COVAX and is one of its biggest donors. The recognition of equitable distribution of the vaccine around the world, including here in St. Lucia, is the driving principle to the UK's approach. To date, the UK has contributed £548 million, pounds, or just over two billion Eastern Caribbean dollars to COVAX. Equally as important has been the UK's global influence, implemented through our policy and persistence in encouraging other donors to support the mechanism. And of course, UK science has played an integral role in development of the vaccines. Along with COVAX, the total UK aid commitment to fighting the pandemic globally is now 1.3 billion pounds. The UK government understands the global pandemic requires a global solution and that until we all defeat the virus, no one will. Working alongside international and regional partners like PAHO, 
This UK aid support means that this year over 1 billion doses of the vaccine will be secured for some of the world's most vulnerable people. The UK recognises the deep impact of the pandemic in the world, in the Caribbean and of course here in St Lucia. I want to congratulate the Prime Minister, the Health Minister, the Chief Medical Officer, Ms Jean-Baptiste and her team for the success of St Lucia's vaccination programme so far. It really is a very commendable achievement um, and I'm pleased that the rollout has been going so well here in St Lucia. It's because of all this I'm especially pleased to be present here today to represent the UK contribution as these COVAX vaccines arrive in St Lucia, knowing that this will help contribute to this, uh, to this island's recovery and its growth in the future and a bright future for St Lucia, uh, as I know will, will happen over time. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Steve McCready, and also the UK government for the support. We've heard that, of course, the vaccine is um, important and that it can reduce the transmission of the COVID-19 virus and also save lives. And we at the Ministry of Health felt it was important and necessary to speak on the importance of the vaccine, but also to get a few testimonies uh, from a few persons to speak on the impact of the vaccine. First, we have a frontliner, which is a nurse, to speak on the impact of the vaccine. I now call on Natalie John. Good morning, everyone. My name is Natalie John, and I am a registered nurse, which is attached to primary health care. Why was it important for me to take the vaccine? Well, vaccines are safe and has proven to be an effective way of activating your immune system to develop antibodies. We often develop immunity when we have had a disease. Yes, but however, some diseases may be more serious and lead even to death. Coronavirus indeed has globally set a precedent and has been affecting everyone. I chose to receive the vaccine due to the fact that I am a frontline worker and has constantly been in contact with individuals at the respiratory clinic and other facilities. Having a first-hand look on how COVID-19 symptoms presents itself, I made a conscious decision to take the vaccine to reduce my risk of contracting severe COVID. The vaccine is to reduce the risk to my family, my coworkers, and my community because life does not entail me, but consists of those I interact with on a daily basis. I would honestly encourage those who have not taken the vaccine to please do so. Let us do our part to protect each other and those we love. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nurse John. Of course, in St. Lucia, we note that we have over 4,000 persons who were diagnosed uh, with the COVID-19 virus. So today we have with us someone who was recently diagnosed with COVID-19 who will speak on her experience and the reason why she feels it's necessary to get the vaccine. I now call on Ms. Delta Benjamin. Honorable Prime Minister Alan Chastney, Minister of Health Senator Mary Isaac, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belma George, Kawo Country Program Specialist Mr. Reno Hewitt, Beaches High Commissioner Mr. Steve McCready, Team from the Ministry of Health, other dignitaries, good morning. It's a privilege to be here today at this prestigious award. As a proud citizen of St. Lucia and having been tested positive for the novel virus on Friday, 15 January, I stand here to share my experience. When I received this call, I did willingly 
without a doubt. Because I knew that I was exposed in an environment where the virus was spreading like wildfire. While awaiting my results, I ensured to be quarantined because of course this was the right thing to do. Three days after I got this devastating call stated, my results came back positive. My spirit got dampened and I felt like a failure. Knowing that I took all precautionary measures like I know how to. Acceptance was very difficult. I went into the shutdown zone and a spell of depression. Once it sunk in the following day, I was back to my normal self. Staying positive, continued exercising at home, and of course preparing my special meals. The outpouring of love and support from my family and loved ones was out of this world. I wish that I had the, vi the virus every day of my life. <laughs> this made the process a lot, a lot easier. Truth be told, there were no symptoms giving me the cue that I was infected. I just had to take the results for what it was. I was totally asystematic. Making a full recovery was my priority, which I did after 10 days I got, I said, I was told that you're officially out of prison. <laughs> I mean, it didn't matter because I mean, I still home anyway, so it really wasn't a big deal for me. It didn't affect me in that way at all. Fast forward to the vaccine, two months after, yeah, I'm legal to, to get this vaccine. After educating myself, I said, nothing is stopping me. I will go ahead with this. I took the first dose, but guess what? It wasn't this friendly to me. I got every side effect in the books. <laughs> <laughs> but needless to say, guess what? I'm excited about those two. <laughs> and whatever it brings to the table, I will take it. Because I, I did this and I'm doing this for me, my loved ones, and for my simply beautiful St. Lucia. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Benjamin, for sharing your experience. We've heard from some of the key um, persons in the arrival of the vaccine, but I think it's important before we move to the second segment that we have a musical performance by Naomi Grandison. I think I'll leave you there. <laughs> Good morning to all. Thank you so much for having me. I am a daughter of Lucia, a beautiful plant that has sprung forth from a dark, rich soil. I emerge from a Thank you. 
Tschö. Thank you. <laughs> we'll and come back again. <laughs> Um, we'll then come back again. <laughs> I am a daughter of Lucia, a beautiful plant that has sprung forth from a dark, rich soil. I emerged from a land that nourishes and grooves in curves and dips along her contours. She bursts out cool waterfalls and hot springs, releasing minerals that cleanse. She relaxes. Why? Ay, 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 ay. Woo! I come from a mother that's anchored in water. She gives me mango, soursop, and papa. A mother with ground provisions and greens. On Twin Peaks, she elevates our vision and dreams. A mother who has birthed a bouillon of cultures. African, Indian, European, Amerindian, Cultures that bond in a Lucian identity of fun, fervor, prayer, and charity. Et même si nous tout pas fort, nous sa parle créola. Et moi j'ai fait vet, poisson, et zaboka. Nous tout ka parle à manière qui différent. Et là nous tout manger, maman là. Ibo, boy. Why, yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! My mother has asked me to speak to her children, remind them of their beauty, inspire health and safety. For if we want to get over the threat of Corona, we must not wait. We should all vaccinate. Remember, to wear your mask, stand at a distance, sanitize, and wash your hands. For if we all take a stand, we can protect our motherland. How many of you agree? Why? Ay, 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 ay. Woo! I come from a mother. I come from Lucia. I come from a mother, I come from, can you sing with me? I come from a mother, I come from Lucia, three times. I come from a mother, I come from Lucia, one more time. I come from a mother, I, you too. I come from a mother, I come from Lucia. so much Naomi Grandison for this touching performance. Okay. Someone who is a key leader at the Ministry of Health and Wellness and of course play a very important part in the COVID-19 pandemic in terms of our response is the Minister for Health. I now call on Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac to bring us with some remarks. Yes, good morning everyone, and thanks for being here. Protocol already established. I still wish to recognize our Honorable Prime Minister, Alan Michael Chastney, our British High Commissioner, Steve McGrady, 
and of course, PAHO representative, Dr. Hewitt, um, who always think that um, he is part of the Ministry of Health. So <laughs> as a result, when PAHO recalls him, we are going to refuse to allow him to go. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Again, we are seeing the unfolding of additional vaccines that we have received this morning. I believe that much has been said. We have gotten all the information that I believe we need. And I'm sure that our Honorable Prime Minister is going to continue to do the honors. So what I want to do this morning is to say that there is a saying that when a manager is not present, a good manager is one whose absence is not felt when he or she is not present. And this is a lot of consolation to me, heading the Ministry of Health, that I have such a competent group of workers, team of workers in that ministry. When I look again this morning at how this is unfolding, I can sit back, and even if I was not here, my presence would still have been felt. I know that the workers would still have ensured that my presence is felt, and my prime minister as well. And they never cease to amaze me in terms of the level of professionalism that they exercise at each and every turn before and during this pandemic. And I feel so grateful, I feel so honored to head this extremely important institution at this time in our lives. I have to say that time and time again, I just feel so elated to be part of this whole process and to be part of the team at the Ministry of Health. I believe that there is no amount of money that can compensate our frontline workers, team health, for what it is that they do every day. And they do it so well, so willingly, so effortlessly. And sometimes it often goes on notice, the type of pressure that the workers in this ministry and of course our frontline workers have come under during this period, during this time of COVID-19. So when I had the critics out there, bringing in all the negativity, sometimes I wonder what impact it is having on my staff. But then again, when they are asked to perform, I see that, yes, we have broad backs in that ministry. The workers, of course, are in that field. I believe their training makes them tough. And their training helps them to understand why some people can be so uncaring, why some people can say and do such evil things to take all this effort that they are putting into the work that they do and reduce it sometimes almost to nothing. And I lament the fact that it is our own people who are doing this to us. Because I know that out there, nationally, I know that regionally and internationally, St. Lucia is regarded, our healthcare workers, the Ministry of Health, is held in very high regard. Our Prime Minister and all of my cabinet ministers and the work that they do Throughout the past few years that we have been in office, we are being held in very high regard in the regional and international arena. And I am here this morning to encourage you, to encourage you not to lose faith when these things happen, to encourage you to continue the fight, to continue to save the lives of our people in St. Lucia. Because when this pandemic started and we were hearing people in leadership positions taking the stand that there is no COVID, I was afraid that some healthcare workers may start to buy into that. 
But thankfully, and we have to thank God that they did not. I can see from the results of what is unfolding here, I can see that our workers were not perturbed and that all of these negative, you know, negative impacts did not really prevent them from doing the work that they had to do. I have to commend our CMO for standing strong, for taking the battery of negative critics that she had to withstand. Dr. Joseph, every, I don't really like to start calling names, but there are some people that really stand out, and I know these people went without sleep for days. Our deputy PS is seldom seen, heard, or mentioned. But this is another person in the Ministry of Health that I can call on at any time of night. I can WhatsApp, anything, anytime. And she's always going to come back to me with a response. Jenny Daniel, we, we don't often hear that name. And there are people who are here with us and those who are, of course, watching us and those who support us in the ministry all the time, whom I may not necessarily mention their names at any particular time, but they know who they are. And I appreciate the fact that they play a pivotal role in sustaining the Ministry of Health and the work of the Ministry of Health. And I hope and want them to understand that, although I may not mention the name all the time, that I really appreciate the work they do, that our cabinet of ministers and the prime minister know of them and the work that they do, and they are appreciated by all the good people of our country. I have always maintained that we must not politicize healthcare. We at the Ministry of Health, when we have to assist people, we do not look at their political affiliation or their color. We help, we assist, because that is where our heart is. And I want to say to all our St. Lucian people who are watching us here today, and those who will hear about this, this, this event, that they ought to dispel the negativity about vaccination. I took my first dose of the vaccine. I was one of the very first people. And, of course, everybody don't react to it the same way. I was informed that I have to take the second dose six weeks later, but now this has shifted. The science has said to us now that we ought to wait eight to ten weeks to take the second dose, and this is what I am doing right now. And oftentimes we hear the talk about the science, the science. Almost to say that the people at the Ministry of Health never went to school, and they do not know anything about science. So sometimes I wonder, who is it that knows the science better than the staff, the workers, and the people who are involved in healthcare? Because you must have science to be in healthcare. From the very beginning, you need to have science. That is one of the areas that require that you have the science. And we do nothing at the Ministry of Health without depending on the science. And this is why to this day, we are not able to say to people who have received the two doses of their vaccines who want to come into our country, we cannot say to them as yet that it is safe to do so because we are depending on the science to give us that information and then we will be able to say so. So I am getting a lot of requests from travelers who want to come in who have their two doses and they want to know whether they still have to do the 14 days quarantine and my response is yes. For now, this is our requirement. It's one of our protocols and people who are coming in with their two doses must still undergo the 14 days quarantine until the science at the Ministry of Health inform us that that is not the case. And I'm hoping that that will be very soon as we see our vaccines are unrolling and we are getting the supplies that we need for us to continue to vaccinate our people. I want to thank all of those St. Lucians who have come forward to take the vaccine 
And I want to encourage everyone to continue to take their vaccines so that eventually we will be protecting not just ourselves, but we will be protecting our loved ones, family and friends. We will be protecting our economy so that we can reopen our economy to enable those persons out there who are unemployed to get back into the workforce and sustain themselves and their families. So today is a very momentous day. This occasion is a very momentous occasion and today is a very special day that we are seeing that the COVAX mechanism, the vaccines through that mechanism is unfolding. This is the first part of the vaccines. We're supposed to be receiving 75,000, I believe. So I am sending out the message that we need to continue to vaccinate. As you can see, the staff of the Ministry of Health, they have produced all these beautiful placards. They have their T-shirts. So their heart and soul is into it. And they are the ones who know about the science. So let us follow in those footsteps and ensure that we get all ourselves vaccinated so that we can get our country back on track. So I thank you very much with these few words. Have a blessed day. Take care, everybody, and get vaccinated. Thank you very much, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac. Of course, I'm sure today that the Prime Minister of St. Lucia is very happy and, of course, proud that we receive the COVID-19 vaccine for the COVAX facility. I now call on the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Shastnay, to provide us with some brief remarks. Thank you very much. First of all, if I can recognize the Lord, Pastor, thank you very much for your kind words today, inspirational words, and a reminder as to who really is in charge. If I can also acknowledge my Minister of Health, Ms. Mary Isaac, Senator Isaac, the CMO and her team, Dr. Hewitt, and also my very good friend, Mr. Steve McCready, um, representing the British. Today is a, a very important day but it is one step in a very long journey. A journey that back in March or February of last year, nobody knew where this journey was going to take us. So in fact, many of us were waking up each day knowing that we had a crisis on our hands, but absolutely no idea as to what the impact was going to be. We heard some testimonials, honest testimonials, some things that we ourselves take very much for granted. The fear and how people deal with uncertainty. So you can imagine on an individual basis how it is. And I keep reminding everyone that a prime minister and cabinet members and the lead government officials, we're all human beings. We're all prone to the same exact emotions as everyone else. And yet we have to muster up that courage every day understanding that we are in front of everyone else and what is expected of us is to be calm, cool, collected, decisive and strong because that's what people expect us to do. And certainly even if we may be panicking inside and having the grip of fear in us because of the level of uncertainty, we have to find a way to overcome that. So today, is an important step in helping to quell that fear that we had 25 or 24,000 vaccines that we were able to receive from a multiple of sources. Um, so Prime Minister Modi um, provided us with some and we were very grateful to our neighbors in Dominica who provided 5,000, our neighbor in St. Vincent and the Grenadines who provided us with 5,000 and our neighbor in Barbados who provided us with 1,000 doses. And those were very important contributions at a very difficult time because we know what we went through in January and in February. So receiving those vaccines at that point uh, was a, a breath of fresh air 
an inspiration, a ray of hope um, for many of us. And certainly those frontliners, particularly the nurses and the doctors and the emergency service workers who had to meet the elderly, had to meet persons with underlying conditions, and we understood the extent of vulnerability that they had, being able to vaccinate them, even if it was for the first dose, was a huge reprieve in terms of protecting um, our citizens. It should not be misunderstood in any way the contribution that the United States of America, the UK, Canada, Japan, and Europe, and Norway have made. In fact, the significant part of COVAX has been through them. And you heard Mr. McCready talk about almost 2.2 billion EC dollars of a contribution that they have made. And COVAX came out of humanitarian understanding that when we have these kinds of crises where there is going to be global demand on a very small number of products, that sadly human nature takes over and persons are intent on putting their, each of their countries first. And COVAX understands that we all live in a, in a village. You can protect yourself, but if you do not take care of your neighbors, ultimately it's going to come back and haunt you. I think many of the developed countries, the G7 countries, have now begun to understand how important the developing world was to their own economies. The closure of borders and the number of persons who've lost jobs because the travel industry collapsed. The amount of consumption that we collectively bring to those economies through purchasing online and buying their services and maintaining our equipment. The difficulty we had even in getting technicians here to come and service those equipments, it's a two-way street. And so the world has passed a point where any one country has the ability of shutting its borders anymore. We all need each other. And so COVAX was a response to that of making sure that there was going to be an equitable distribution of the vaccine based on your population. And the initial part is that we would cover at least 20% of 163 countries, if I'm not mistaken. 163 countries, 20% of their population would be covered by COVAX. Um, that's a very noble um, cause. And I certainly would not want um, the gratitude of my government and I know the people of St. Lucia to those countries that their names are lost in COVAX because some persons will say oh um, some of our stronger allied countries are not helping us that's not true um, they have been helping us and today is actually uh, a demonstration of the beginning of that so today we received 24,000 um, doses we are on stream to receive 77,000 um, and we're hoping that before the end of the month, um, but that's always subject to change, um, before the end of the month that we'll receive at least another third um, of our dosage. And I would imagine that that would be what would be in line. I want to thank the, the CMO and her team um, who made a very quick decision once we knew that we were going to get COVAX to proceed to use all of the doses that we had, the 24,000, for our first round. And so therefore, the doses that we've received today will be used for those persons who have already received their first dose. But I know that the uh, CMO has kept a couple of thousand stocked away um, for emergency use. One of those uses might be um, that uh, I'm actually supposed to be on a conference call now um, with the cruise industry of restarting that business and that the 1,100 St. Lucians who worked in that industry that we've given an undertaking that we would make sure that they would be vaccinated before they went back onto the ship. So that would be an example of an emergency that we would deal with. If in fact we have football teams, we just had one that's going off to Curacao and we uh, assisted them by helping them become vaccinated. We have the Olympics coming up and we do have solutions and also their coaches are gonna be participating. 
We, we want to make sure that they're also vaccinated before they went. If somebody's going to go for medical treatment abroad and requires um, to be vaccinated before they go, that we would be able to do that. So we will have some supplies available for those kinds of emergencies. But we're certainly hoping um, that before October that we would have received at least 50% um, um, of, of the required amount to, well, to, pop, to vaccinate 50% of our population. I have to also say that I'm encouraged by the success in the UK, um, which have been leading the world in rolling out vaccines. And Father, forgive me in saying this, they've even converted churches um, as, as, as places for persons to come to become vaccinated. So they've taken it very seriously. Um, I see the United States now is now introducing vaccinations for persons under the age of 18. Um, so we're seeing global success taking place. And I think that the Mary Isaac pointed out, and also uh, Steve also pointed out, that the ultimate goal is to get back to some level of normalcy. Too many people have had to make a significant sacrifice during this crisis. And again, I don't want to ever take it for granted um, what they've gone through. Very difficult time. And certainly being able to get income back into households um, where persons right now, I think, are in survival mode. I don't think anybody's talking about using these monies to, to buy a home or to move on, but we're all just bracing ourselves and surviving it. But I'm really hoping that within the next couple of months, that solutions will be encouraged by a lot of the work that was been taking place behind the scenes. Um, the Ministry of Tourism, along with the Ministry of Infrastructure, have worked very hard to get airlines to fly back to San Lucia. So one of the benefits of never closing our borders has been the confidence that we have developed with those airlines. So we actually have more airlift coming into San Lucia between July of this year until December than we had in July of December of 2019. And one of those new introductions I was sharing with, with Steve is that British Airways, who is going to come back with six flights a week dedicated to St. Lucia, two of those flights are going to be into Heathrow. Um, I can say to you that from the time I was Minister of Tourism in 2006, we've been negotiating and trying to get American Airlines to start a service out of Dallas, Texas. So that flight has now started. JetBlue is now coming out of Newark, which is a new flight for them. And I say that because these are rays of hope. These are stepping stones towards getting back um, together. And so I, I cannot even begin to thank PAHO, WHO, and the team at COVAX um, for what they have done. I, and I can say to you, all of us in procurement, as well as in the Ministry of Finance, simply getting PPEs in March Ventilators was difficult. And when I heard Governor Cuomo literally saying that the state of New York was being outbidded on PPEs and on ventilators, I, I remember remarking to myself, boy, we are in for a rough ride. So COVAX could not happen at a better time. Um, at times like this, it's very important for us to recognize the persons um, and institutions that have helped us. So first of all, I really want to thank my Minister of Health, Mary Isaac. Um, when I made the decision to appoint her as the minister, it is for all the qualities that she's displayed. These qualities that I knew of, the leadership, her strength, and her humility. And I want to thank you, Minister, for helping us through this very, very difficult period. The Permanent Secretary, Mr. Benson Emile, again, a gentleman who was thrown into the deep end very recently, um, uh, having to take over a ministry that was really um, running at high gear, uh, running the Victoria Hospital, uh, opening up of OKEU, um, the expansion of the healthcare centers, um, the, the working on the healthcare insurance program, and more importantly, um, managing staff that were overworked, underpaid, um, and keeping them highly motivated. And many, many a times, I know that the relationship, thank God, he came from the Accountant General's office, so he understood how that process worked. But many a time, trying to get um, uh, reagent, trying to get uh, materials here, 
and not having it in the budget and somehow trying to convince everybody that this was the right thing to do. So I can't thank him enough. Um, the Deputy Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Jenny Daniel, again, I think the minister made the point quietly in the back. Um, not a face or a name that you often hear, but being the backbone to the ministry. The Chief Medical Officer, which we all know, um, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, um, who has become, my wife would say, my first wife, um, a person who I almost talk to every single day, um, whose guidance I've come to treasure. There is never a time that I have called Dr. Belmar that she's been panicked. In fact, maybe I'm more panicked at times than she is, and she has to calm me down. So I want to thank her um, for her strength. In the Pajo Country Program Specialist, Dr. Hewitt, um, again, I think the minister acknowledged um, that he has not seen himself as part of Pajo, but seen himself as part of the Ministry of Health. Our immunization manager, Nurse Telsa Jean-Baptiste, who we got to hear speak today, um, very powerful um, uh, woman, and I want to thank you for your strength. The National Vaccine Technical Committee, the procurement team and primary care team, particularly the nurses, can't thank enough of them for the work that they have continuously done. I've had the opportunity to go to many of the uh, um, respiratory centers to see people working through their lunch hours, um, giving up dinners, uh, giving up special occasions with their family members, simply to make sure that they were there to calm the country. Because when you go into those respiratory centers and you see long lines, and you see that the nurses and the doctors are working through the time at, at making every effort to attend to your need and comfort you. These are some of the um, uh, unheralded uh, benefits that St. Lucians have. The other stakeholders have been the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the cadets providing security in order for the vaccination sites, many of them volunteering their time. Um, I had again an opportunity when I went through the vaccination rollout to meet many of them who had volunteered their time, and I want to thank them very much. The uh, Events St. Lucia, and I was just saying today how proud I am about Events St. Lucia. When we had designed Events St. Lucia, it was not just about musical events, but it was having an entity that any time that we were doing mass um, uh, um, public events, whether a head of state was coming here, um, whether it was a special celebratory moment, and certainly I can say to you, never envisaged um, them being as involved as they've been in the logistics of rolling out the vaccines, getting the healthcare centers to work. Um, I want to say to all of them, thank you so, so very much. And for those persons who felt that events should have been shut down um, because we didn't have any events, truly didn't understand and appreciate the talent that we have here in St. Lucia. Of, of logistics. And again, I want to say thank you to all of you for the extra effort that you all put in to making this happen. And lastly, but not least, I want to thank SLASPA and the Ports Police and all those people who have been instrumental at our airports and seaports. You know, um, again, we take these things for granted. There are other countries in the region um, who attempted to reopen uh, late this or late last year and almost immediately had to be shut back down again because they could not enforce the protocols. Um, our team at the airport have been working assiduously, learning since May, and have done the most amazing job of processing sometimes small numbers of people and sometimes as many as 11 or 1,200 people in one day and not backing backing down and doing it as diligently as they do. And I would say to you, 99.9% .9 of both St. Lucians, as well as the tourists who go through that process, leave just going, wow, these people know what they're doing. And I say this because, again, we think it's easy. They just made it look easy. And um, their diligence in doing their work contributed significantly in making sure that opening up our borders was safe to everyone. And I'm, I'm, I think up to last week, I don't know of one person who contracted COVID who's worked on that team. 
the taxi drivers, all of the security personnel um, that have made this thing work. I, I, I can't thank you enough. And certainly um, the confidence that you've instilled in the airlines and also the tour operators who are selling St. Lucia, but more importantly, on behalf of the thousands of St. Lucians who were able to get back to work uh, safely, um, a lot of this had to do with you. And so again, I wanna thank you all for today. And again, say that this is one more step in a very long journey. And while we may have a better idea where this journey is going, none of us can see the end of it as yet. And, and sometimes you think you're looking in horizon and you're looking from peak to peak, but you don't understand the turns and twists um, that you have to take when you go down into the valley. So again, let's hope that we have less valleys and many more peaks. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's okay. Okay. Thank you, Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney. We're coming very close to the end of the program. We will now have the closing remarks from Dr. Glensford Joseph, who's the Medical Officer of Health. Good day, team. And I said again, good day, team. We are a team. Mistress of Ceremony, allow me to adopt the protocols so established. In the latter part of 2019, we were all preparing with many plans for an exciting 2020 and beyond. not realizing what 2020 will be to our lives. Globally, regionally, sub-regionally, nationally, we have seen how the then called novel coronavirus showed the integration of this world as a single global village. When we talk about a village, we tend to have the concept of a very small, unique place. But coronavirus has brought us to that point where the safety of one in, a, in their home, in a community, really means the safety of the world. And as such, we have seen over the year plus, the health impact of COVID-19, the in economic impact and the social impact of COVID-19. Many of us at this point never thought we would have been wearing the mask in the general public out of the health institution where you use it for that protective purpose. But here we are, thanks to COVID-19. In St. Lucia, we have seen at all levels, starting nationally, we have seen the impact on each and every sector. This is not a Ministry of Health business. The response to COVID-19 demonstrated that each sector do contribute to the health of this nation. And we have seen it here. Yes, we are health workers. We take care of your illness. We try to ensure that you maintain your health. But at the same time, in all that we do, we do rely on the taxi drivers, the farmers, here we are at Slasco, and I can go on and on. The interventions before really demonstrated how COVID impacted St. Lucia. And as the Honorable Prime Minister, Ms. Alan Chastney, pointed out, it is a collective effort to win this battle. We are gonna continue and success we will. 
But this being said, I must take the opportunity on behalf of the Department of Health and Wellness, I will join with the Department of External Affairs because, you know, in reaching out to the many countries, territories, they play an integral role in us accessing many of the key ingredients, the medical and the pharmaceutical that we need to ensure that we function they play a significant role. And by extension, the government and people of St. Lucia. Here we are presenting our heartfelt thanks to the Pan American Health Organization, rep represented by, as we call him, a member or a staff of the Department of Health and Wellness. Mr. Hewitt, thank you for being on us, <laughs> really to make things happen. You know, we do our work and he is part of us. The World Health Organization that has been instrumental in the whole COPAX facility and to ensure that St. Lucia has equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines. You will understand that with what is going on today, uh, the developed countries with lots of resources will easily outdo us in accessing vaccines. But well, thanks to this COVAX facility, we're able to have our first trench of vaccines through this equitable distribution mechanism so established. St. Lucia will also take the time out to acknowledge the meaningful contributions of key agencies such as the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization, often called Gavi, the United Nations Children's Fund, some of us understand the UNICEF, and the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations in ensuring the availability of COVID-19 vaccines globally. As pointed out, we can only be safe when each one is safe. This lot of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine will be used to accelerate our return to some level of social and economic normalcy. as we strive to achieve over 70% population immunity through immunization. And this is very important. The Department of Health and Wellness looks forward to the sustained collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization and the World Health Organization as we continue to implement public health measures, including immunization to control and prevent the spread of COVID-19 and to save lives and livelihood. We have learned of the limited doses of COVID-19 and as such, we are getting over 20% in batches. But while vaccination is another tool for us getting to some level of normalcy, we must and we will continue our public health measures of wearing a mask, physical distancing, frequent hand washing as we implement other measures like the curfew that really is aimed at reducing the spread of COVID-19 so we can get back to that level of normalcy quicker than that protracted time if we continue not to practice these measures. So once again, thanks to the Pan-American Health Organization, 
the World Health Organization and the COVAX facility for this lot of COVID-19 vaccine allocated to St. Lucia. Thanks again on behalf of the country. Thank you very much, Dr. Joseph. Well, we have come to the end of the official ceremony of the arrival of the COVID-19 vaccines through the COVAX facility. And of course, on behalf of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, we would like to thank all the organizations and agencies which provided much needed support um, to ensure that this event was a success. Thank you very much. We ask that persons join us in the back for light refreshments. Thank you. Ireland. 24,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine have just arrived. We're coming to you live from the Eunora International Airport where the Prime Minister, other government officials and other dignitaries as well were able to head on over to the tarmac and to start this morning's proceedings to formally receive this batch of vaccines. We want to let you know that this is a part of the vaccines that we are to expect through the COVAX facility for St. Lucia. Uh, 24,000 doses received today. In total, we should expect 74,400 doses through the COVAX facility. Just to go back into this morning's ceremony, we had the Prime Minister speaking about what the COVAX facility really meant and its benefit for countries like St. Lucia. He indicated that the spirit of the COVAX facility understands that the, the world is a village and the welfare of one country impacts on others. He indicated that we are past the point of countries operating in isolation and that the nature of the world just simply does not permit this world trade, world economics, and much to St. Lucia and other vulnerable nations benefit. This facility has allowed for the equitable distribution of vaccines uh, being based on population. And through the COVAX facility, we have received a guarantee of vaccinations for 20% of our population. That is 74,400 doses. The Ministry of Health has indicated that the 24,000 doses that have been received today will go towards inoculating individuals who received their first dose. And we understand that almost 23,000 individuals have so far re received their vaccination since the start of the since the start of the national COVID-19 vaccination campaign. The Prime Minister has indicated that the goal is to inoculate 50% of the population by October and we will be uh, keeping you updated as to the work of the Ministry of Health and Wellness in that regard. We'd like to thank you so much for tuning in. Do stay tuned to NTN as we cover more leading developments from the government of St. Lucia. This has been a ceremony uh, to receive uh, the COVAX vaccine and the first batch has arrived today Wednesday the 7th of April 2021 rest assured that after today's uh, 24,000 doses arriving uh, 74,400 uh, will in total come so the rest rest assured is on its way of course, St. Lucia's national COVID-19 vaccination campaign began back on the 17th of February 2021 with Phase 1A, healthcare workers in clinical settings, first responders, security service personnel and other frontline workers were prioritized in Phase 1A of the campaign and Phase 1B. 65 years plus including residents of elderly homes and people living with chronic health conditions were also prioritized we so far seen uh, targets at uh, the tourism sector and now the education sector individuals who are not able to move about to re reduce mobility being prioritized for the campaign right now and this prior to this uh, 
today's arrival of the COVAX vaccines was made possible uh, after we received some donations from the government of India in the sum of some 25,000 doses. We also received from friendly island neighbors, from Barbados, Dominica, St. Vincent, a couple thousand uh, doses of vaccines as well to help jumpstart our campaign. So overall, things have been going well. And uh, if I can go back to the, the del delivery of the estimates of expenditure for this fiscal year, the Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney, did indicate that the projections for slow and steady recovery of our economy is contingent in part on the vaccination campaign. So the hope is that uh, there is continued stride made with respect to the inoculation of the population. And as he indicated, the hope being 50% of the population having immunity by October of this year. My name is Jesse Leons. On behalf of the NTN, we'd like to thank you so much for watching. Do enjoy the rest of your day and stay tuned to NTN. Cheers.